Yo, 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 what is good, everybody? Welcome back to the wild world of dark matter. Today, we're diving into that explosive finale. And by explosive, I mean more Jasons than a family reunion in Alabama. Let's break down all the crazy, insane moments before my brain melts trying to keep up with all these dudes. Remember the chaos with way too many Jasons last episode? Hold on to your butts because this episode cranks it up even further. Prime Earth gets swarmed by an army of Jasons. Think of it like a family reunion gone horribly wrong with way too many hungry mouths and not enough potato salad. Daniela, bless our heart, eventually figures out something's fishy and it ain't the tuna casserole. And let me tell you, the escape scene where she shoves Jason 2 down the steps is stereotypical TV gold. It's like World Star, but for TV nerd. And after that, Daniela basically turns into her own version of Wonder Woman, dodging Jason's left and right, keeping Charlie safe, and still looking amazing. She deserves an award, a vacation, and a therapist on speed dial. And that's just the beginning, as this episode takes things to another level. We get introduced to Punisher Jason, complete with a gold chain, and serious beef with Jason too. Jason Prime stumbles upon a hidden folder in his email that leads him to a Jason-only chat room straight out of a fever dream. Imagine a Discord server where every user is you, but with different trauma and fashion choices. Oh, and the Jason variants decide to have a Hunger Games style deathmatch. It's like they all watched too much WWE and thought, yeah, this is how we resolve family issues. This episode is called Entanglement. And man, does this have a lot of meanings. On one hand, it's a term that Will Smith probably regrets hearing every day. It also is the name of that horrible folder that led to the horrible message board of nightmares. But overall, it's a good description of the chaos that Jason and his family find themselves in. Can we get a red table talk with all the Jasons? But first, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I saw that the last video got to like over 5,000 views and that's thanks to you all giving that video over 350 likes. I'm going to go in extra hard on this video. So please, 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 please hold me down again and give this video a like so I can keep my wife happy with all this time that I'm investing with you. Thank you. This episode opens with Jason 2 getting the shit kicked out of him by another Jason. This one doesn't have the zipper face, so he's not from the bar, but he also doesn't have Jason Prime's nose cut, so we know it's not him. This dude gets to kick his ass, though. What's significant in this scene is we get confirmation that this Jason absolutely thinks he's the prime Jason of this Earth and is attempting to beat his family's location out of Jason 2. We switch to Daniela with Jason Prime, when she starts receiving a flood of text messages from Jason variants. It's like your wife getting spammed by her exes, but all of them are you. And then Charlie starts getting them too. Kid's gonna need therapy just to delete his messages. They let Charlie choose where they're going to hide out in order to avoid picking a place any of the Jasons could think of. They end up at Charlie's rich friend's house because who doesn't have a rich friend with a house that we have access to? They settle in, but Charlie can't help but have a pity party. Jason cheers him up, but when it comes to Daniela, she's just as confused as the rest of us when it comes to really reconciling with the existence of all these other Jasons. Now, this is when things get Michael Keaton nuts. Things turn up a notch when Jason gets restless and decides to do some internet surfing. He checks his email and finds a folder in there called Entanglement. In there, he finds a link to something like a Discord chat room where we see all of the Jasons are posting Kendrick-like diss videos and taking shots at one another. And my goosenips do we see some Wes Craven looking mofos lurking out in the multiverse. Did you see Terminator Jason? Yo! This one right here? This Jason right here. He looks like he's the real problem because listen to how calmly he says, what if we tried joint custody? Like what? 
Yo, Budget Terminator over here probably thinks Skynet is just a brand of discount sneakers with thinking like that. Jason's problems are multiplying exponentially by the second. Now, I was told in the book that there's a significant difference in how the message board works. Jason Prime discovers a board where alternate versions of himself leave messages from different realities. And these messages are often desperate attempts to communicate or share information or just warn each other about the dangers they face in the multiverse. We then switch to Daniela the next morning enjoying some privacy on the nearby beach. Jason joins her and what bothers me about this moment is that we get a clear look at this Jason and my guy doesn't have the scar above his nose anymore. And that was the only thing helping me tell him apart from all the other Jasons. We then switch back to new Jason variant, who at this point is just absolutely disgusting. Like, we actually catch this dirty mofo sleeping in the middle of Daniela's bed with his nasty ass clothes on. All the clothes he wore outside, in the bed. Shoes too, probably. This Jason decides that he's in a mood and starts demanding that Jason 2 give him back his cell phone so that he can use it to try and find his family. When Jason 2 hesitates, this new Jason whips out a knife and offers him some free plastic surgery to sweeten the deal. Jason 2 makes the right decision and the new Jason sees a message in the phone from Blair and she wants her car back. We then switch back to Prime and Daniela, with Prime coming clean about the message board for all the other Jasons. Jason Lohi asks her if she's interested in their lottery or shared custody ideas, and Daniela high key hates the f out of those ideas. We switch back to new Jason, who at this point is downright torturing Jason 2. And I'm not saying that Jason 2 doesn't deserve it. What I am saying is that this is getting hard to watch. But this Jason right here, you know, this, this ain't new Jason no more. No, no, no. This mofo is channeling his inner Johnny Bernthal with the gold chain and all. And he starts going in on how Jason 2 is a sick pervert who is living out some twisted fantasy while raping his wife. And my gosh, if this ain't Punisher Jason, then who is? Punisher Jason then lets us know how much of his history is shared with Jason Prime when he confirms that he lived the same experience with Daniela getting murked by trigger fingers and how Layton 2 had his Ryan 2 murked as well. Their histories diverge when Amanda opened the sixth door while in the panic state in the corridor and traveled to a world of a big burned down forest. And while they were investigating this world, the branches of the trees fell, with a really big one pinning Daniela to the ground. He even confirms that the gold chain he wears was Amanda's. We contrast that with Jason Prime finally getting some family time with Charlie. You know, the usual breakfast chit chat, heartbreak, alternate realities, multiple versions of yourself trying to steal your life. Just a normal Wednesday morning. We then switch back to see Blair extending way more privilege than I like when she rings the doorbell and proceeds to just walk into these people's house. She proceeds to make her way upstairs where she's confronted by Punisher Jason. This guy wants Blair to hand over her phone to track the car's location. But Blair ain't no pop. She hits Jason with a <coughs> Angela Hill UFC punch and makes a run for it. Punisher pulls out a gun, but Blair hucks his ass and leaves him crying on the floor. She made him her Mitch in under 30 seconds. And Jason too, mm, he better start talking. A little bit later is when we see Daniela go into the message boards of all the Jason variants, which can't feel good. And later admits to Prime that she went on the message boards and told the variants that she made a decision. Now this is where things turn up as later that night, Jason is walking through the house and sees something moving in the shadows outside. 
He heads out to investigate and hears a lot of commotion, sees his tires slash, and finds a whole ass Jason variant laying out in the grass bleeding. Things start getting dangerous and Prime heads back inside, only to get held up by a hobo with a shotgun. This variant is smart too and came with a plan. He wants Prime to take off his clothes so he can switch places with him and is smart enough to know that Prime probably set up a safe word. Prime surprises absolutely everyone, and I mean everyone, when he actually fights back. He doesn't get far because he can't fight, but he tries. And of all the wild twists, we see that Prime is saved by none other than Jason too. This mofo showed up, and he showed up just in time and shoots Shotgun Jason in the back. What's more unexpected is that he starts apologizing for everything. He even helps Prime in this moment by giving them the keys to his car so that he can take Charlie and Daniela and escape. Jason too decides to make the sacrifice play and stays behind to battle it out Hunger Games style with the other Jasons. We then switch to see Jason and Daniela heading to the box. This world is no longer safe for them, so their only chance is to try to find somewhere else where they can carve out a life for themselves. They arrive at the box and find out that there's practically a homeless encampment full of variants waiting outside the box. Surprisingly, the other Jasons say that they're not here to stop them from leaving, and they just want to say goodbye which is kind of touching and kind of sad. We have every reason to believe that all of these Jasons are a prime Jason. And there's a chance that they all belong to this world. But because of the choices made by Prime while in the box, he spawned an infinite number of variants of himself. They don't even all fully agree with the idea of this Jason getting to leave with them, but they do it anyway. It's thought provoking and it's a bit bittersweet. Jason Prime gets to leave with Daniela, but has to leave his world behind in exchange. Ah, well, let's go find a world where Charlie gets the girl. And they all head inside the box. We then get a cool montage where we see a world with a Ryan seemingly making more formula. We also see, you know, trigger fingers from Earth 2. She's still around, minus a few digits. We also switch to see that Blair from the Apocalypse world finally decides to head back into the box after refusing to go in the box with Prime and Amanda earlier in the season. We then switch to see Leighton Prime going from Earth to Earth like he's party hopping and having an amazing time. We also switch to see something that I know the internet has been talking about for a while. I know y'all been talking about this. In the closing moments, we see Amanda too sitting down having some social time with a friend. When we see Amanda's coffee date just got a whole lot more interesting. Plot twist, it's Ryan Prime. But what just happened? I know a bunch of folks were having theories in the message boards that the world that Jason 2 brought Ryan Prime to when he kidnapped him was the same world that Amanda 2 went to where she settled in on a world. And there they are. They're in the same world. But what does this mean? And why was Ryan even looking for her? How does he even know who she is or to even look for her in the first place? We then see Prime, Daniela, and Charlie walk into a world of Charlie's choosing while closing the door behind them and end credits. And wow, what an ending. What a beautiful ending. But even as the season ends with Jason Prime and Daniela walking out in the happily ever after, the show still teases some open-ended questions with that cliffhanger chance meetup between Ryan and Amanda. Because Prime and Daniela are doing the unthinkable by letting Charlie have his hand on the wheel and choosing the worlds they visit as they travel the multiverse. How many people think this is going to undoubtedly result in more variants? But Jason too as well, he's still alive. He survived the purge and made it to morning. What's next for him? Look, if you're new here, please do me a favor. Give this video a like and subscribe for more. Seriously, help a brother out. I'm trying to keep my wife happy with all the time I spend with you guys. Check us out next week for more recaps and discussions. I'm going to be hopping back in the House of the Dragon. Until then, peace. And remember,